What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell with the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in studio by Oz Garcia, a man who doesn't actually need many introductions. He's a New York Times bestselling author. He's very, very well known as an optimization thought leader, health leader. You know, there's a lot of different names I can put in the biohacking space. He's right at the top of the uh, industry and, you know, again, from a thought leader, he's just at the top of the echelon. So it's an honor to have him here today. Before we get into the topics, as I always do um, on the Jay Campbell podcast, which is kind of new, I'm getting used to like having the Jay Campbell podcast and not the TOT Revolution podcast, <laughs> is ask my illustrious friend, how did you get on the Jay Campbell podcast talking to me today? I, I, it's it's uh, some some force in the universe <laughs> compels me to like come together. You know, some quantum fucking events. You know, exactly. outside of time and space. I'm I'm happy it happened. Awesome man, awesome yeah. awesome. I, I actually actually I I started to become a fan of of uh, your site on FB and um, you know some of the posts that were going up were just you know complete caught my attention of course and I started posting also. So let's 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 say on a, on a more pragmatic level it began there. Awesome man. Well again it, it uh, I appreciate it. Um, as I told you off air, and this is obviously the first time that you and I have ever yeah. spoke and, you know, personal one-on-one, right? The internet is so beautiful, but, uh, I do believe that the energy of the earth right now is aligning people of like mind. I'm a big, and I know you are too, but I'm a big researcher of the quantum and we are all definitely being aligned together right now. This is exactly Very what is happening. Yeah. This is exactly what is happening. And, you know, obviously I'm a big student of Dr. David Hawkins and the map of consciousness and, Travel. As you know, those right now, and obviously you and I could geek out and we could go down this path and not even talk about the things that we're going to talk about, but those of the wrong vibration, and again, no judgment of them, but you know, when you're down here in the root chakra, you tend to not do as well, Oz, in this new energy, right? So a lot of, yeah, so a lot of people right now have relationship problems, physical health problems. I mean, I could go on. There's a litany of, of things. Right. And as you know, it really is due to not being where you should be optimally, not just from a physical health standpoint, but from you know, a mind-body aspect. Correct. Right? And, well, and again, the ancients have told us this, right? Like you can read any of the ancient texts and they talk about you know, the Kali Yuga and all these different cycles, but we're back around where the energy is shifting. Anyway, I wanted to say that. Go ahead. Well, well, there's a, a brilliant author, uh, uh, James Clear. He wrote a book uh, entitled Atomic Habits. Of course, right? I love James. We talk all the time. Yep. There you go. So, so, so how many people do you know are actually on a path where, where what defines them is improving their life and, and improving who they are by, by 1% a day, right? Right, man. So, so James Clear, if, if, if you recall in, in Atomic Habits, remarkable. Um, was was coming up the, um, in in high school, and before he knew it, he was on the ground. The the player right before him had lost control of the bat, and and James Skull was cracked open. So so that begins Atomic Habits, and when he got out of the hospital and got back home, he knew that what he wanted to do more than anything was was play ball again. So so in in order to do that. He, he, he did a little bit every day toward ball player all over again. By the time he left high school, you and I both know, he was voted best, best athlete. And, of course, was playing baseball. I think that most people lack the kind of rituals and practices that actually allow them to, to think about how can I be a better human being each day. <clears throat> and I mean that without... Um, trying to sound cliche every single day you do got to get up you got to redefine 
the kind of human being you want to be that day. Well said. You know, do you wake up and do you practice um, 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 any number of meditative uh, uh, paths? Do you do your breathing exercises? Do you do gratitude um, meditation? Do you do, do you keep do you keep a gratitude journal? So so very basic things that allow you to, to contemplate on your condition and the condition of the life of the people around you. And, and I think that that's where it begins, right? So, so, so when I look at what it is that's missing in the world, to your point, it, it's people are not very, very grateful. We've got a president right. Right now who, after everything that he's been through, you think he would be grateful that he just came through this process. <laughs> listening, you're listening to him, um, you know, just take people down and cut them off at the knees instead of, of sitting, sitting back and saying, you know, I just saw this bullet and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be, yeah. to be president. So yeah. There's no sense of that. And it defines a lot of the really poor thinking that's going on in the world today right. and the mess that, that's, you know, taking, taking the, the planet, like you said, down some, some pretty crappy holes. Yeah. I mean, that's a really good point to say that because you're right. I mean, I mean, yeah, obviously politicians and just the whole political system is like probably the worst place to quantify or qualitate it. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, he doesn't give a shit. I mean, he puts t- <laughs> tweets up <laughs> talking about he's going to be president in 2046 and his wife is going to take over him. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the world is in a weird place. But again, being a student of the quantum we create our own reality, right? Our thoughts, our, correct, words, yeah. our thoughts, our words, our actions, and our focus allows us to create anything we want, no matter how crappy the external is. And as you know, and just kind of really said it is like too many people are focused on the external and, and, and not doing the stuff that you talk about, you know, the inner work, as I call it, the mindfulness stuff. Well, 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 to your point, um, um, by, by evolution, the way that we're kind of hardwired and, and um, um, how we think in large measure about, let's say, our future, the next five minutes, the sure. next five days, the next year and so, and so on, is, is in large measure to fear it, right? It, it takes us out of the moment, and we're right. kind of, of over-concerned about what's going to go wrong. Right. What's going to go wrong in my relationship, with my finances, with my health and sure. so on. But, but when you think about it, the, 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 the nervous system that we have, the brain that we have evolved um, to actually anticipate in large measure something bad about to happen when you right. look at the weeds kind of shuffling a little bit and then thinking to yourself, there's something back there that's looking at me like I'm, I'm going to be lunch for them, you know, a sandwich. <laughs> right. so, you know, push that forward 100,000 years and you got a voice in your head talking about the weeds, but, but the weeds is really, you know, the, the future. Right. And, and instead of being able to, to contemplate what's going on in your head, what you're doing is, is, is running this, this neural default network, the way that the neurologist calls today, that can't stop talking to itself about everything that's going to po- probably go wrong. We're the only animal that can simulate the future. And, and we, we simulate usually a future where we're going to get eaten right. you now right. uh, by, by some sort of predator. And, and as it turns out, we're, we're terrible at predicting the way things are going to turn out for ourselves, for people around us. Very bad in that capacity. Yeah. Um, um, so, so I think that when you do become more mindful, when you're thinking more about what is meaningful, you're able to get some sort of distance between yourself, whatever yourself may be, and that voice in your head that's so preoccupied with how things are going to go wrong. I really like that. Um, You know, I kind of, uh, one of my mentors, you know, calls that what you were talking about, the, you know, being eaten by the predator in the wild is survival programming, right? And you're right. It's instinctual that we are emboldened, emblazoned, attached to that egoic you know, behavior. And you, again, have to be, you know, I call it become the neutral observer. And again, through the inner work, through the mindfulness, being mindful of recognizing that you don't in 2020, you're not going to walk outside and get eaten by a saber tooth tiger. So no, but, but what happens is instead the saber tooth tiger is the IRS, uh, my girlfriend leaving me. Oh my God, I'm going to get cancer. It's, 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 it, it, you know, fill in the blank, right. but it's the occupation with the future 
right. that for the most part, you're probably dead wrong in terms of predicting. Never will exist. Outcome. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So all well said. So we got so many bullet points and I could go in a lot of different directions. Sure, please. But um, so for aging people, like your advice, and again, my audience is, you know, for the most part now, mostly men, but you know, anywhere from 35 to 55 and up successful right. people, very sophisticated audience. What do you recommend to dodge wear and tear and infirmity? You know, to, as I call it, to living a fully optimized life, what do you recommend? Well, well, let's put it this way. I'm going to be, I'm going to turn 69 in, in, in a few days. That's awesome, man. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. So I've been doing this for 40 years. Um, um, I'm, I'm a three-time runner of, of the New York City Marathon. I've done a couple of ultra marathons, well over 100 miles. Um, I still do my Bikram. I still hit Equinox nice. four times a week. But, but it's all earned. So there's a lot that, that I got to do to kind of buttress it all up so that sure. I can do what I want with, with an aging body. Um, there's, this goes back to what I said earlier in terms of, of practices and rituals that we all have to do. But, but it's, it's by category. Um, you know, you're wearing an aura ring. There are a lot of people that, that are in our age group that are, that are well monetized, but, but their sleep absolutely sucks. They, sucks, they don't yeah. have any way to quantify it, right? I'm, I'm wearing a Fitbit Aura to see what's the difference between it and, and the readings that I get on, on Ultra, excuse me, and, and, and my Aura ring. What, what's giving me the more accurate reading? But you'll find that people age sooner than later because they're not quantifying their deep sleep, right. their HRV. They're not quantifying the amount of REM sleep that they're getting, and so they're they're miserable. You yeah. know, they they, they you know they're, they're, they're simply because they're not looking at sleep hygiene, right? Right, and that can affect really how you look at the world, your yeah. mood, um, your your uh, uh, um, microbiome, um, of the bacteria that that's living inside your gut. All of it go kind of kind of goes both ways. So it's not, you can't break it down into like, okay, let me see what food I'm going to eat. You know, I, I follow an, an, an ancestral dietary plan. Nice. So I'm vegetarian a couple of days a week. Then I introduce protein and then I'll vary my protein depending on what it is that, that I want to do. I mean, what, ty what type of protein do you eat? I eat a lot of seafood. I'll eat a lot of seafood. On days that, that I'm vegetarian, what I do is, is I do intermittent fasting. And then sure. probably around every six weeks, more or less, what I'll do is I'll do five days straight out. I'll do uh, something like like Volta Longo, where I'll reduce my caloric intake to about 500 calories a day. Yeah. I'll do that for five days, six days. Maybe I'll, I'll just pop one day and do just water, tea, uh, bone broth, crap like that. But I've been doing this for, on and off for about 40 years. Yeah, it's awesome. So, so, so one of the things that I know you would probably agree is that as you get older, the other thing that you want to do is control inflammation in your body. Of course. And, and, and the quickest way and the best way that you're going to do that, and I mean, I mean this in terms of, of even inflammation, specific inflammation around your heart and inflammatory effects that occur in your brain, um, is by doing intermittent fasting. That, that, that has to become something standard that, that we all do on a weekly basis. Yep. Um, I'll stop right here because I, I can keep adding stuff on. No, 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 it's good. I mean, I, I love this. I mean, this is the, exactly, this is soul food for my audience. Um, yeah, I mean, senescence and autophagy. I mean, fasting is, and again, I, I got to comment, you're 69 and your hair is amazing, dude. Thanks. I mean, the fact that your hair is that thick at 69, I mean, you're obviously doing something right, right? But, <laughs> but, 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 but the, reality, the reality is, is that yes, like, we are in a world of excess and gluttony and instant gratification. And so it takes time and intelligence. And like you said, you know, to be quote unquote mindful of cutting back and it's so simple. It doesn't require any money at all. And obviously, yes, I've written two books on fasting, but the reality is, is like, it's important to be mindful of the idea that you should allow your body physiologically naturally to modify and, and, you know, as I say, fumigate, you know, all of the cells that are dying and, again, just existing, you know, through, you know, free oxy radical degradation and all that stuff of over time. And, yeah, fasting is so simple. It's such a simple thing to do. But, again, many people struggle 
with that because as you already said, you know, they have microbiome, yeah, uh, no. dys dysregulation, dysfunction. There's so much stuff going on that fasting just for six hours, they go nuts. Well, well, think about this. You know, the, the, the human body is actually designed in large measure to underfeed. Right, um, right. Predators, predators go for, for wh whatever predator you're looking at, you know, whether it's a big cat or a bear um, or a human or a shark. They go long periods of time without eating. Right. And when we were, you know, in our hunter-gatherer phase, um, the, the intermittent fasting would be imposed on us in large measure because if you were looking at an antelope, you know, thousand yards in front of you, there were probably several hundred other eyeballs within the same <laughs> thing. Too. So you'd be lucky if you would get an antelope, you know, once a week, let's say. Right. right? And, and in the meantime, um, in the way that we were, not the way that we are so much now, unless you're looking at, at one of these really remarkable um, um, runners from Africa that, 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 that do these, 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 these marathons, um, um, in, in spectacular condition, you know, very low ability to injure themselves and so on. So if you, if you go back in time, that's the way we were when we were hunter gatherers, our bodies and our backs supported us to actually right. cover extremely long distances for periods of time and, and outlast whatever it was that we were going to hunt down and kill. So, so we may not have been the fastest animal, but we certainly could outlast most of what we get and then eat. So you would have intermittent fasting, and then you would trick that out with intermittent feasting. Right, 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 right. Just, right, just, just like just like almost any predator that that you that you'll see. Once you you have a lioness, <clears throat> and she kills, she'll relax and 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 gorge, you know, with with her, um, 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 you know, fellow hunter lionesses and so on, until the appetite begins to get them again. But they will be hungry for periods of time, just like we will be. Right. And, and that actually stimulates autophagy within our body. What we know is that when you underfeed, vision improves, your brain regenerates right. itself Absolutely. better. Absolutely. You can actually reduce the risk of, of cancer in your body. Yeah. You know, your blood sugar can stabilize itself. We've yeah. worked with many people that are uh, pre-diabetic or diabetic already. And, and teach them how to fast to begin to get their blood sugar under control and the hemoglobin A1C under control yep. by, by doing very well studied intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. right? And then, and then when, when, when you've got the problem of food solved, you know, in, in the world the way that it is now, in the postmodern world, where, where in America, you can, you, can, you can eat yourself to fucking death and nobody's gonna arrest you. Most people do, Oz! <laughs> You know, so, so who's going to stop you? So, so if you're designed by nature, right, to eat everything in sight, and, and you, can, you can now cheaply buy just about anything and shovel, you know, tons of cows in your body every day, you're going to do it, yeah. you know? And, 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 and so there's no real incentive to, to learn how to reduce your, your consumption and to be comfortable with being hungry. Yeah. You know, there's... Right. Um, right. Um, um, uh, Ori Halfmeckler was a brilliant, brilliant. Um, uh, a warrior uh, diet. Uh, the warrior diet, right? right? Yeah. Warrior diet. That, that's yeah. where it all began. That's, that, he's the one that actually got me really interested in intermittent fasting yeah. back about, what, 20 years ago, right? Yeah. Yep. So, yep. so he just came out with a terrific book recently entitled The Seven Principles of Stress. And he talks in there in large measure about how it is that intermittent fasting does make our bodies perform. At, at, at top capacity, right. along with hormesis, right? Yeah, like, of course. Stressful in, in a certain way, but it's stressful in a way that's good for your body and mind. Exactly. So, exactly. So, so the shortest way to get from point A to point B when it comes to autophagy, yes, we can talk about peptides. Yes, we can talk about IVs. Yes, we can talk about um, um, certain combinations of nutrients that will do that. But, but the fastest route, you know, based on, on so many studies that you and I could probably talk about for, for quite a while, is, is under feed. Under exactly. feed as much as you can. Exactly. exactly. And, oh, and oh, by the way, I'm, that's what I've been doing for five years now. And, you know, my diet, and you, and you don't know this, but, you know, my diet is exactly what you just described. It's literally alternate day fasting. Beautiful. So, you know, today, Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays and Sundays, I barely eat. I mean, I literally sometimes Oz won't eat. If I'm feeling really good 
and it's seven o'clock at night, you know, usually it's a one meal a day type thing, but you know, okay, warrior, it's a, a warrior diet type thing. But I, if I feel really good, I won't eat. I'll wake up at five o'clock the next morning. So I'll basically go, you know, 27 to 29 hours without food and I'll have a really good meal. Usually it's oatmeal or something. And then okay. I drink a protein shake before I go to the gym and then I drink Perry something. Usually there's a Perry workout. My wife and I will make something and we drink it, sip it through our training and then obviously post workout. But then that day, the training day, I am feasting. And when I say feasting, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, but, but I'm not, you know, I'm not destroying myself, but I'm basically re-glycogenating. I'm uh, doing yeah. I'm doing really good things because my body just was obviously deprived. And again, as you know, there's a lot of biochemical processes, the cascade, you know, you've got ghrelin. You've got, uh, uh, you know, the catecholamines at the 18 to 20 to 22 hours of fasting. So yeah. it's, the truth is, and you know, Jason Fung's books, but you know, and I used a lot of his research in my first book, but the alternate day fasting actually hasn't been studied enough. Most of the research is 16 hours, 14 hours, Correct. 17 hours. If they were looking at what, you know, Hoffmeyer was talking about a long time ago, and again, looking at you called it, I love how you say it, you know, periods of feast and famine. Right. That's where you're going to really see the amazing changes physiologically and, of course, psychologically because, again, you're telling your body to constantly have to upregulate and downregulate instead of, like, getting addicted, you know, all these people that are on ketosis diets or ketotic diets or whatever they do because the body, as you know, always wants to self-regulate. It always yeah, wants yeah. to return back to yeah. homeostasis. And so when you're doing the feast or famine, dude, it never can figure it out. And you just keep your body guessing all the time. Correct. And, and to your point, you, you, you said to, you, there's a couple of things I want to, I want to touch on there that, that uh, uh, you brought up, you know, individuals that are on a, on a ketogenic diet, for instance, you can do, you can do a ketogenic day or two a week. Right. I, I don't have a problem with that at all. Sure. I think, and, and, um, some of my clients that are athletes that, that really want to go pure keto, you know, just got murdered once they went out and played football or got into a oh. martial ring because there was just no glucose in their exactly. body. Right? Exactly. So, so, so and by the way, they got hurt most likely too, right? That's when you rupture very, a tendon. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. And, and, you know, but, but they were, you know, they were, they were, they were on, on keto diet. So, <laughs> is, 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 I'm keto, bro. Yeah, completely. So, so, so what we, we've introduced is a kind of modified, look, if you want to be, if you want to be in, into the ketogenic diet, that's fine. There are people right. that are, are epigenetically built. To yes, have, that's true. That way most of the time. That is and true. You can go play ball or um, a Sport or you know do judo on, on on just burning ketosis. That kind of leftover. That's a leftover gene sequence and an epigenetic adaptive way of being. When when probably there were hunters and gatherers that would go right. for long periods of time right. without having any carbohydrates. So so you had a gene sequence. Um, I think um, by blood type AB that would do mo much better. I'm primarily getting their fuel from from um, uh, protein and fat. I can't do that. I don't think you can. And most people today are not adapted to, to do that. You need to have your starches. I, I really like what you're going, and I'm glad we're talking about this because I've always theorized, and obviously I've read the Diam the, the, the Diam um, How do you pronounce the guy's name? Paul Diamo, the blood type diet, right? And I'm also yeah, I, and I'm also a big student of. <laughs> ketotic diets, you know, Lyle McDonald, I was one of his research confidants when he wrote the first uh, book on keto, ketogenic dieting theory and practice in the 90s. I, I was a wow. fucking test dummy for him for three years, right? So I was in long-term ketosis and, wow. you know, I understand gluconeogenesis better than anybody. And I also understand, and I tell people this all the time, and this is where a lot of people get this wrong. Um, uh -huh. And by the way, Dominic D'Agostino does, you know, brilliant research on all of this. But the reality is, is that. But, but also, but Dom, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just want no, to go sideways on that for a moment. But Dom probably is genetically well adapted. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Ketosis, I, I, was just, I was just, I was just going to say that. I, I literally was going to say that. And, and, and just so you know. And by the way, we're, 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 we're preaching from the same hymnal, Oz, because. Yeah. You definitely, when you're one of those types, the blood types, you definitely retard insulin metabolism. 
Yeah. And as you know, there is research out there if you look deep enough, and this is where the majority of people in ketosis that don't have the awareness that you and I have, they don't understand. Uh -huh. Because again, they think, well, wait a minute, I thought that being in ketosis improved insulin sensitivity. Well, yes, but if you're in long-term ketosis, the body being again a very self-regulative and corrective and adaptive organism is not going to utilize insulin anymore. So try coming out, right. coming out of a long-term deep ketotic diet and then, you know, instituting carbohydrates and glucose again and see what happens. Very good. You exactly. feel like shit for months. Dude, it took me six weeks to get out of being a zombie. So I'm exactly like wow. you. I'm exactly like you. I agree, and I will debate anyone that most people, and again, I don't know what the percentages are, but most people, exactly. do, they do need glucose to function yeah. optimally. And so why, what, we're, what we're recommending, which is, again, offset, is much better in the long run so that your body does not become totally, you know, not able to handle different energetic substrates. It's not so. Well, well what, what, you know, it's funny. I'm, I've, I've, I've got a dear friend um, who's pretty much breaking into this field and um, she's, she's, she's vegan vegetarian and, and long distance runner and a marathoner. But, but I remember when I did my first marathon, I must have been, I don't know, 30, 30, uh, all, I was 30. I did it, uh, maybe I was 29, it was 19, it was 1980. And, and, um, at that point, I was convinced that, that the way I should eat, and the way that, that you're going to save the world, was to be vegetarian and vegan. I used to right. grow a lot of my own food in my, 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 my apartment. Believe it or not, I had shells with every sprout that you could possibly nice. have. And I had a, I had a hand-cranked wheatgrass juice. <laughs> and so, and so. You are going to save um, the world, bro. I get it, man. Of course. It. And, and, and I, I loved, um, um the Hippocrates Institute approach back then, you know, Victor Skolvakis and, right. and I forget what her name was. So I used to grow a lot of my food. I used to go to the first uh, uh, farmer's market in New York Union Square. So a lot of the, the, the local farmers would bring their organic um, uh, vegetables to Union Square and the carrots would look like rubber. I mean, you know, back then, who knew really how to cultivate um, organic food. It's not. It's not what it is today. You know, right. we work all foods and everything looks as beautiful and remarkable as it does. So I ran my first marathon as a vegetarian vegan. I thought this was remarkable. By 1984, after having done half marathons, thousands of miles, and so on, my my weight was down to 120 pounds, and I felt absolutely awful. You're gonna die. Right? Yeah. 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 And and back then I was very close with a a, a brilliant. Uh, nature path is dead now. It's Sid Saffron. Sydney said to me, "You got better start eating some some animal protein." There was a a terrific macrobiotic restaurant in New York back then. Some New Yorkers will remember it's called Suin, and and they were serving bluefish from from Long Island. Right. And, and this is after being vegan, vegetarian vegan for about five years at this point. I went to dear friend to Suin, and I ate a piece of 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 um, um, bluefish. And the next day I went out like a rocket and I put, I put on the pounds that I needed by reintroducing seafood, you know, after years of fasting, being vegan, vegetarian and, and, and all that. Yes, I got the wins, but, but there, there was a cap in terms of how long could I, 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 could, I could sustain that. <clears throat> and I'm curious to hear what, what you would think in terms of that regard. Well, I mean, first off, uh, I'm glad you found animal protein. It's funny. Um, I don't know if you're familiar. Do you know Dennis Mangan of Rogue Health and Fitness? So he's, no, he, so he's like 64 and, you know, he's got a pretty big, um, he's a pretty big influencer on Twitter. He's in San Francisco, but he's just got the exact same story as you, you know, ultra marathon athlete, same shit, vegan. I think he was even pescatarian. I mean, he did the whole thing and, you know, right. literally broke his body down to like when he, but I think he was 37 or 38. He's a little younger than you. He's like 64, but okay. in great shape, takes care of himself. Very smart guy. He's a microbiologist by his trade. But anyway, he, you know, he has the same story and it was like, you know, once he went back to animal protein, you know, his what life. Yeah. So, you know, I don't truly judge. I, I'm like you, we're all biochemically unique. 
we right. all have different ways um, and means of, you know, metabolizing food, sugar, all that stuff, you know, obviously uh -huh. ketones or not. So, I mean, like, I don't judge people by and large. I do think personally, you know, based on my experience, based on consulting and working with a lot of different people that by and large, whomever or whatever tweaked us <laughs> a long time ago, somehow our microbiome adopt, uh, evolved to handle, you know, forms of, you know, high folate, high creatine, high B vitamin meats. Yeah. And when you don't give your body those, you know, forms of, again, natural protein, animal protein, whatever you want to say it, like there does usually over time lead to a deficiency. And the, uh, as you found out, that deficiencies can cause serious physical issue. Very much so. Well, well, if we were to jump back for a moment and talk about Peter Diadamo. Yeah, um, um, please do. They, would, they, they used to have a test. Peter used to have a test that you could get to actually test your saliva and, and your secretions, right? So what he called the secretigo. Many of us have, um, I'd say in the vast majority, we're, we're for the most part very high sec secretors. And, sure. and by that, what, what, what's, what, what he meant was one of the few omnivores in the planet. Is, is our saliva. So what we now know is that the saliva of, of human beings, of, of the kind of primate that we are, and even chimpanzees, is very, very fluid, very liquid, so that it, it allows us to actually, actually allows us to swallow meat very quickly. When you look at, at the saliva of, of a gorilla, it's actually quite thick. Right. And it allows them to chew and chew the vegetables or primary, excuse me, the leaves and primarily the fruits that, that, they, that they consume. And, and, and it's one of the, the, the things that points towards the fact that we're actually omnivorous. We're not going to do very well being vegetarian. I mean, again, I, I mean, you know, we won't get into a spirituality conversation here today, but I, I'm, I'm open to receiving the idea that at one time, whenever we were created, we were created to be perfect and we didn't need to eat. And, you know, we were telepathic and telekinetic. We had all these gifts and skills and all that stuff. I mean, I'm totally open to that. You know, I've heard that from a lot of stories and I'm, again, I'm a big reader of the ancient texts, but at the same time, I do realize that now, you know, with our evolution, you know, regardless of your thoughts or beliefs or theories on any of that stuff, like we have somewhat evolved to eat forms of animal protein again whatever you you know again i'm all about experimentation what works for you might not work for somebody else yeah. there are people as you know very well there are people out there there are long-term vegans 20 plus 30 years of being vegans who are in great health they're you know they they can contort their bodies they practice yoga and all sorts of different things but you know again i think they're the again my opinion i i think they're the outlier Truth, truth be yeah, told. Well, well, also, they're, they're genetically built. They're well adapted to that. Right. But when you look at vegetarian societies, when you look at the, the vast majority of, let's say, vegans in India, you, you also have what comes along with that is, is a chip for a higher um, um, propensity towards diabetes. Absolutely. So, so what you're going to find within, within populations of, um, unfortunately, very spiritual very spiritually inclined people in that regard is an inclination towards diabetes. Yeah. And, and that comes with being primarily on a vegan diet. Of course. Diet, vegan diet. Right. Right. And they also have bone, as you know, they have bone mineral density issues. Yeah, That's they're, correct. They're, right. They don't, they don't obviously have as much muscle. They're not as insulin sensitive naturally. So yeah, there's, there's pros and cons. I mean, I think personally, you can be very spiritual and also eat meat. Again, I always, you know, I say whatever you consume, just give it a blessing and thank it for its sacrifice. <laughs> it's, it gets to be really simple. So a couple other things, and by the way, this has been an amazing Great. podcast. I try to shut these down about 45 minutes, but I'm going to go a little bit longer with you. Let's um, do it. So again, you're almost 70. You look amazing. You've been taking care of yourself. Are you, are you about 70? Uh, it's awesome, dude. I mean, I'm going to be 50. I mean, by the way, are you Pisces? Uh, 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 Aquarius. Oh, so you miss uh, Pisces by what? Two days? About that, yeah. Yeah, so I'm Pisces. I'm February 24th. So we're close, dude. Oh. Yeah, so we're close. However, I want to talk about um, nutraceuticals. So Please. again, you're a perfect guy to ask 
Because again, you're clearly slowing the aging process. You're reversing it. Regardless of when people say yeah. you can't reverse aging, well, you can slow it down. Um, well, so what, what are your favorite ones? Pharmaceuticals, and, and then I want to hit on that point, uh, uh, just that point about reversing aging. I'm going to sure. say some, some, some things that you'll like a lot. When it comes to nutraceuticals, I, I kind of break it down into different categories, depending sure. on what it is that you're looking for. So um, heart disease runs in my family, let's say. And um, my mother's father died at a very young age, back in the 50s, at, at 57, his heart blew up. And my mom's had heart issues, um, most, had heart issues most of her life. So I, even though I was running as much as I was running, and I was uh, uh, fasting, going back to all, all the years that I told you about, um, very modest in terms of my excesses, it turned out probably going back about 10 years ago that my, my LDL levels were going up and the LDL particle size itself was, was really quite small. So in other words, very, very dangerous, very right. dangerous combination. And, and curiously enough to my absolute shock, my HDL levels were, were quite low and the particle was, was, was high. So, so my HDL wasn't strong enough to shuttle out the LDL that was beginning to, to build up around my heart. So even though my plaque levels were, were extremely low, um, I forget the part of, of the heart. I think it's called the, the, the widow maker. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, so I, I work with a brilliant cardiologist, uh, Eddie Fisher, Edward Fisher. He's one of five, six siblings, and they're all cardiologists. So basically, <laughs> his older sister. I wouldn't want to be around that Thanksgiving table, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you're right but but you know i figured th these are the people that i i, I kind of want to know a little of bit of course of course is, 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 yeah his, his elder sister is um one of the heads of, of cardiology research at at harvard so so i remember when when i i had my cat scan done i about six years ago Teddy said to me listen you're everything looks great but but you got a little problem you got a little bit of plaque but it's in it's it's here in this this part, and he was showing me on the computer screen, and I said, okay, so what's the problem? He says, well, you know, it's called the widowmaker. That that's all I need to see. <laughs> right, exactly. And and uh, the inclination, of course, is you know, well, you're gonna have to go on statins and blah blah. So, God. so that that wasn't the route that I was gonna follow. No. Um, I I remember t about 20 years ago, another cardiologist that I knew well at the time. Um, when everybody thought that statins were the magic drug that was going to change everything cardiology, I tried it, and, and within a week, I couldn't run. You know, every joint in my body was... Turning. First off, nobody um, intelligent thought that. That was just the brainwashed entrainment conditioning coming from the people that created statins. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. that very, very good point. In fact, now, what they're fine, what you, and you probably know this, is the longer that you're on statins, the higher the amount of, of calcified plaque. Dude, it's up. incredible. Um, yeah, we started to see that in, in our office, um, um, primarily among male clients that have been on statins five, 10 years, and they were getting CAT scans and, and a very high amount of, of calcified plaque all over. So, so, yeah. so, so now it's a known fact. You can Google it and, and, right. and, and see how it is. But yet works. they're still writing them every day, Oz. They are. <laughs> they, they are. You know, some, some of the largest selling drugs worldwide. Unbelievable, man. Yeah. Forms of statin and the amount that they give people. Unbelievable. Um, without compensating with things like CoQ10 and whatever else. Right. That, that's just a, another story for another podcast. Right. So, so I've got a nutraceutical protocol that I follow that actually helped me reverse a lot of the plaque. That's awesome. That's one thing. So this is what I mean by, by category. The second one is, um, um, and at, at some point we can go into that in depth, what are the nutraceuticals in there? They're the ones that, that actually I think have a lot to do with, with living a good long life and being able to control um, autophagy. Okay, but you can't say autophagy. that on the Jay Campbell podcast and then not give them out. So this has been so profound. Well, well, Tell well, us. Let's say, let's say, um, um, David Sinclair <laughs> is probably one of the, the, the most brilliant you know, geneticists alive today. I, I, I kind of uh, uh, took my cue from him. So I use a very high amount of uh, um, nicotine. Nic nic Nicotinamide ribotime. Right. Ribotime, yep. MMR, yep. Got it, got it, got it. 
Yeah, and, and, and along with that, uh, uh, a very high amount of resveratrol. So, so Thorn does make a combination of both that has resveratrol and polyresveratrol, which breaks down very slowly in, in the bloodstream, along with uh, NR. So I probably use, I probably take about a gram of that per day. And then in my, my clinic, I probably do um, um, a weekly IV that where I microdose a little bit of NAD, about 25 milligrams per, per um, um, uh, push, let's say. But I, I'll probably do about 1,500 milligram IV drip once a month. Right? And, and for all the things that, that anybody listening to us can, can Google and understand about the role of NAD. So I think NAD is absolutely central to how well we do, the length of our telomeres, the chromosome's uh, ability to repair itself, very, very important. Um, given that it's a very hectic day um, for all of us and we're concerned with our, our mental state of, of being and how well we wanna sleep, there are two nutrients that, that come from Ayurvedic medicine, which are critical. One is ashwanga and one is right. bacopa. So, so we know that bacopa uh, reduces anxiety, but it also increases the, the deep sleep stage of, of um, our sleep. And so, so these are uh, 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 critical in terms of everybody using them, both men and women. I recommend about a gram of ashwanga. There's a version, called, there's, there's a form of it called sensoril, which I think is terrific. And you can think very well with it. It helps you regulate cortisol. About a thousand milligrams in the morning, thousand milligrams before bed. And I say the same thing is true for bacopa. Um, I like as an athlete, coenzyme one, CoE1, Inada, um, probably about 10 milligrams on a daily basis. If you just want to think well, depending if you're a coffee drinker or not, I don't think it mixes well with coffee. It feels like you, you put your finger in, in a, an electrical socket. But Inada has been around, or CoE1, for, I don't know, a good 30 years. It's a version of vitamin B3, too. Uh, um, related to NAD, it's actually NADH, curiously enough. Mm -hmm. So about 10 to 20 milligrams of that instead of coffee gets you very clear, very good for your, for your mitochondria in addition. Um, um, a, a pinogen is turned out to be remarkable, both for men and women. It's a, it's a deep, uh, a very well sourced form of, of chamomile. And it also allows you to think better when you take it in the daytime um, without all the amount of dopamine that tends to race through our brain, norepinephrine, which also makes us stressed out. So I think epinogen is really quite remarkable. And if you take it at bedtime too, it improves quality of sleep, especially deep sleep. For controlling inflammation, I would say Boswellia aqua, which also comes from um, Ayurvedic medicine, right. is, is one of the more remarkable things that are on the market right now that, that I, I love. So I probably use about one to two grams of that a day, mainly to deal with um, leftover injuries from being a runner for so long. That works extremely well. Um, fish oil, hands down, one of the most remarkable things in the world. Believe it or not, Life Extension makes one, an omega-3 fatty acid, an omega-3 mm -hmm. combination with sesame seed extract um, sesame lignin and krill oil. I probably use about four grams twice a day, both for inflammation and controlling inflammatory damage around my heart, keeping my HDL levels up and allowing me to uh, control LDL overall. So, 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 so those are some of the more remarkable things that I use. I could go on. I probably take and I rotate through, um, maybe about 60 different supplements within a week of, and, and each one is designed for different categories sure. one is to improve mindfulness one is to control what's going on with my heart the other ones are designed in large measure to clear out um zombie cells and senescent cells right there i think um probably curcumin very high quality yeah, yeah. curcumin it, it is, is a profound anti-inflammatory, but it's also really good to support you in terms of autophagy. So I probably use um, about 1,500, about 
50, about a gram and a half in the morning, a gram and a half before bed. It's also a really good nootropic. So you think better with it over the long run. Most of the things that I'm, I'm actually recommending, Jay, work remarkably well in terms of what they're targeted to do, but they also roll over and they have a profound effect on the brain. Um, we do know that certain nutrients like, like carnitine, when you acetylate it, acetyl right. carnitine, right. actually makes you think better, makes you focus better, and it increases BDNF, brain-derived neural oh, yeah. factor. Oh, yeah. so, so that's about 500 milligrams a day that I use also. Um, something very techy, which I think your, your listeners would enjoy a lot. I'm, 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 I'm all about my brain. So it's our primary asset for the most part, along with, with some other things. Um, but for brain function, if you want to really keep your shit together as you get older, I think different nootropics work remarkably well. Um, like I said, acetyl carnitine. I love bromantine. I think bromantine is unique in terms of its ability to make you focus better. Um, what, uh, what, what dosage? What dosage? Uh, I'd say about 25 milligrams three, four days a week works really, really well. Okay. Otherwise, it tends to go flat, but bromantine is, is really quite remarkable. And, and I could elaborate from there. Some people like paracetam a lot. I really don't. I like to use... Bromantine. I don't like any of the racetams. I don't like any of them. They give me a headache, do nothing for me. Never have. Exactly. The, the only one that I like, curiously enough, is aniracetam. Um, in very small amounts, it works primarily on the right brain. Yeah. So it, 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 if you use low doses, you can actually find that your thinking is much more lucid. Yeah. Um, and, and overall, you're a little bit more creative. It's the only one of the racetams that doesn't jack you up. Yeah. So, 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 within, so within all those, you can you know, kind of begin to sort out what it is that I think categorically you would do well with. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't disagree with any of that stuff. A lot of those things I do use myself um, from my, from a nootropic standpoint, and I've played around with all of them. Sure. Uh, nothing beats a very micro surgical dosage of modafinil again, reg on and off. Right. So for very me, so. yeah. So for me, when I want to be extremely creative, which I'm writing two different books right now. So as soon as I get done with your podcast, I'm going into isolation for two hours. My wife knows that uh, to, to finish a peptide book that I'm writing, writing right now. But, uh, but I love 25 milligrams of modafinil first thing in the morning and then doing going out in the backyard and getting into my mindfulness, nature, sun gazing. I got my own little ritual and stuff like that. But uh, all the things that you said and mentioned, um, I don't disagree with. I, I, I'm going to send you off air a new company that I'm uh, working with as an affiliate right now called live health. Sure. They have three amazing senolytic supplements that all the things that you just talked about, but actually put in one synergistic blend now. And I know the manufacturer who's making this. So I trust in the, uh, the, the quality control and the sterility of the, of the process and stuff like that. But anyway, I'll send them to you. But uh, all the things that you said, absolutely hundred percent, you're right on it. You're dialed in. And this company is actually making some now with this synergy or that combination of stuff that you talked about in, 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 inside it. I wanted to ask you about one. Sure. Uh, are you familiar with the Ashtaba plant? No, Tommy, I'm curious. Okay, so the Ashtaba plant is, um, it's A-S-H-I-T-A-B-A, -A -A, and it's essentially 3,4-dimethylchalcione, which is also known as DMC. So well, this, well. yeah, this stuff, dude. So they have a supplement called, literally it's called autophagy, ageless autophagy. So um, it's basically one milligram of this, one capsule a day. You should see in vivo what this is stuff, this stuff is actually doing to remove senescent cells, like you call them zombies. Yeah, you want to send me a link to that. Oh yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for since, sure. For since sure. you're actually, since you're working on peptides, I like, um, the Foxo 04. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, it, 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 it's absolutely breathtaking. The, the, the way that it works actually clear out zombie cells, yeah. um, yep. um, senescent yep. cells, and so on. Yep. Yep. The way that we were doing it typically over the last couple of years, the combination of bioflavonoids with the satinib, and which is in, in very low dose, combined with a bioflavonoid, uh, remarkable at clearing out a lot of zombie cells in your body, a lot of inflammatory yep. damage. When you were talking about age reversal, if you would do two courses 
of bioflavonoid plus the, the satinib a year, you could reverse your body's age probably about two years. It also increases telomere length and so on. You could get the same result now by using the FOSO4. Yeah, and um, there's, there's also the- but, but pretty the, remarkable. Yeah, so that so a hundred percent agreement with you. The other uh, peptide, of course, now to reverse telomeres uh, or to extend them is um, epic. What is it? Uh, not epicatalon. Epitalon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Epitalon's remarkable. Yeah, it really is right. Three times a year or four times, depending on how active you are. You know, well, quarterly. Jay, when you get to my, <laughs> <laughs> you want to maybe run a course. Um, I say about every six weeks. Um, really, because you're 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 ex- you're accelerated, yeah. you're aging yeah. in an accelerated manner. Right. So right. I'm not taking my I'm not taking any chances in, in yeah. doing it 50 times a year. Plus, yeah. it also, interestingly enough, improves melatonin receptivity within the brain. So you sleep better. Are you able to use melatonin? Say, I'm one of those non-responders. Like, if I use melatonin, I literally get a headache so goddamn no. bad it destroys me. It cannot use it. Literally, no. Never I, use I, it. That, but, but remember what I said, um, it improves melatonin receptivity right, 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 right. your own melatonin, right? Yeah. But the, the sleep formula, and I think this is actually good in terms of your tropics. Let me just pop this in there. I use l I use glycine, and I use phosphatidylserine or PS before bedtime. Hmm. I combine that with um, um, a little bit of oral GABA which you know has a hard time penetrating the blood-brain barrier. Right. But, there's, but, but still, you have GABA receptors throughout your body. Um, I'll also use taurine at night because right. taurine does penetrate the blood-brain barrier right. and it does right. stimulate GABA production. So, so those nutrients in, in different, differing amounts before you go to bed um, have a, a, an impact of knocking out knocking the voice in your head out and actually extending sleep remarkably there are other things that you can put around that but but that's kind of like the basic structure of my sleep nootropic formula so last all great stuff last question for you um i know that you're primarily your primarily your animal protein comes from fish your carbohydrate sources uh yam squashes basmati rice uh, beans, legumes. I lived in Japan. I worked in Japan a number of years ago for a company called Jinomoto. And the, the, the largest providers of, of amino acids worldwide, it's about 50% of the, of the amino acids that are used for feed and human consumption. So I worked with them on a project um, going back, I don't know, about eight years ago. And I just lived in the Japanese diet, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sure. They're the longest living people on earth. Uh, right. um, um, and it's very basic. It yep. was like rice and-, and, it's, and it's pure and macrobiotic. It's just purely a macrobiotic diet. Purely. Very much so. Very much so. You know, seafood, miso broth. I, I lived on, 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 on the Japanese diet for the, for the several months that I was there. And, and now, based on WHO, World Health Organization, data on who the longest living people on earth right now is Japanese women. Yep, octogenarian. Find that it's Japanese men. Yeah, so oh, exactly. Talking, if you're talking about a general population, this is probably the best adapted diet to the human body. I also think, and I agree. I, I also think, and I spent uh, I spent three months in Japan when I was in college. It's a long story wow. for another day, but. Uh, the Japanese also, you know, obviously Bushido, the way of life, it's a very low stress life. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, obviously combine that with macrobiotic diet. Also, they're very taught to be the neutral observer. They don't go nuts and freak out and, you know, create the hormonal cascade and the hormesis back and forth all the time. So it's like, you know, those, they do live the longest, although, you know, you look at their economy and they've been, you know, a, basically a zombie economy for 25 years. And the funniest thing is, is like when I went to Japan and again, this is, this is back in the early, early nineties when I spent my four months there. If you were, you were probably, you might've been living there. That was when the Japanese, it was the height of economic power. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember when the Japanese, you know, the, 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 what's the, what's the currency in Japan? I can't think of it right now. The yen, but right. Is that, is it the yen or not? Uh, Yes, you're right. Yeah. So I remember handing a $10 yen bill to go into a nightclub when I was like 21 years old in college. <laughs> and they, it was worth like $90 in American currency and they handed me back a five. And it's like, you know, for us, it's like, oh, it's 10 bucks. It was five bucks to get in. Uh, no, it was four. Well, 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 
<laughs> you know, we can still get away with that. It, it, remember also that they're very much into saunas and, and right. health funds, right? Exactly. And, exactly. You know, if I was to add one more thing here sure. um, that I do on a regular ba basis is either cryotherapy or, or ice baths um, and saunas on a regular basis. You want to unpack, you know, the cold stretch proteins in your body that are making right. you older. And you want to do the same thing with, with heat stress protein. So, so I found that I, I picked up the habit of doing, you know, extreme saunas and extreme cold in Japan. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you do, what about red light? Do you do any kind of red light therapy? You know, my, my, my buddy, Ben Greenfield, uh, keeps telling me I ought to do it. Maybe you're going to tell me more about it. Um, I mean, I mean, we're both, we're both shills of Juve. Scott, did you hear it? I said, I'm a shill for Juve. Yeah, I mean, Ben and I were together last right, week. Terrific. Yeah, no, no, honestly, it is amazing. My wife uses it every single day. I mean, I truthfully probably use it five days a week. I mean, I'm so busy. I'm out of the house. Um, but we do. We have the full body, you know, thing in our house. My wife has been using the copper peptides on her face, uh, which I, you know, it's one of my, one of my companies is a, we sell GHKCU, which I'm sure you're familiar with. But she's been using it. It's remarkable. That's yeah, unbelievable. She's it's been also really good. It's also really good for, for growing your hair. If you want to know, Dude, what it's it unbelievable. Hair it's growth. transformative. It's yes, it's a transformative. But what she's been doing, and we just sent, I just sent Ben and his wife a couple of bottles of it because there's a serum, we have a serum and a cream. But she's been putting the serum on and then doing eight to 10 minutes you know, of the red light, the, we call it the juice, ah. and then putting the cream on top of it, but she swears by it. And then my co the co-founder of our company, my, my, uh, he's a very high level biochemical engineer, his name's Nick Andrews, brilliant guy. Right. I literally told him that about a week ago, and he's like, why would she do that? And I said, bro, my wife is very spiritually, intuitively gifted, somebody told her, so she says. So he starts researching Medline, and he's like, Holy shit, Jay, look at this. And he starts sending me all these studies about photomodulation and GHKCU and the, you know, the synergy. And I'm Amazing. like, yeah, dude. Well, I actually, I actually, uh, uh, I do do photomodulation that I do do. I, I use the, the V light, mm -hmm. uh, alpha. It's actually, I actually have it behind my computer. I'll show it to you really quickly. This just happens to be here coincidentally because I was using it this morning. So this is the I have it too. I, I have it too. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that's anytime, awesome. Anytime that I got to read or I want to study, I just put, you know, jump in bed, put this on, and it, 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 you, you just notice how much better you are overall. So I do, so I do, do red light, but mainly by using the, the B light. All right, so last question. Phenomenal podcast, yeah. by the way. Phenomenal. So you're, all, you're almost 70. You don't look like you're 70. You're obviously very anal retentive. You're doing all the things right. Have you noticed? Have you noticed? I mean, I'm obviously, you know, I have no filter. It's Jay Campbell. It's the Jay no. Campbell podcast, Oz. But have you noticed any kind of memory decline at all? No. No, my brain's doing better now than, than it probably was 20 years ago. I figured ago. you were going to say that, actually. I figured and, you were going to say and, that. And, and, but you got to earn it. You really got to absolutely, so dude. I do. I do have my my um, um, different neurofeedback devices. I do do lengthy meditative uh, sessions on the weekend. I have new calm. Um, all the there there are smoothies that I do make that has everything from lion's mane in it to you don't even want to know that that you know the, the different kind you know carnosine which i think is right. remarkable right uh l-phenylalanine different things that actually i know increase the neuroplasticity of my brain right i do love um besides the v-light that i i just showed you i do love the halo sport and there you know is honestly i had it i sent it back dude i i don't like the it's aggravating to me to have to get it wet and then put it on my head and all that bullshit well, I that's the biggest complaint but what i do is i take an ice cold shower first right I'll wim hof in the morning right that, that that's the first thing i do out of my bed then i throw on the um um my halo sport while i'm preparing my smoothie see that's probably smart actually that's probably smart that. i just dude honestly like it's an awesome and by the way as you know too it's completely it's horrific and again not no offense to them because they sent it to me for free but i i literally i literally it it, it, it does not fit well you know that it does not fit yeah, well it's, <laughs> it's just a no, nuisance 
none of these devices fit well. No, dude. You know, you it's a total them. nuisance. <laughs> I just sent it back to him. I'm like, guys, I love you and I appreciate you, but I'm not going to wear it. So give it to somebody that will, but you know, maybe they will, maybe they'll adapt it. But I like that. By the way, how long is your ice shower? Um, probably about 20 minutes. You literally get in a freezing yeah. cold shower first thing in the morning and sit in that goddamn thing for 20 minutes. Yeah. And, wow. then, and the winter, the water comes out a lot colder. You're and an animal. That's not, <laughs> that's not counting the cryotherapy that I may do weekly. Right. Right. Or the ice bath that I may do. We, you know, like I'm trading yeah, yeah, yeah. off. I'm, yeah. I'm always doing the shower, but even in the winter, I'm doing cold baths and or cryotherapy. So, so wait a minute. So when you're in the cold shower, by the way, this is amazing. But when you're in the cold shower for 20 minutes, are you wearing the, the, the halo? No, no. I come out. I thought maybe you're just hitting your body and you're wearing it at no, the same I, time. I get up at about the same time that you do. My, my, my morning routine can easily shut, take up about two and a half hours. Yeah. Before I'm out the door, so right. so I gotta get up early. That may right. include workout or not. Um, we'll go ahead Equinox later in the day. Right. But but the morning routine is what sets me up. So the cold shower sets me up. The sports halo sets me up. I don't use it to work out. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Is, no. You know the big selling point. But but I use it primarily because it actually. But how can you work out with that big fucking thing on your head? <laughs> Give me a break. I yeah, in know. the studio when they video people wearing it, they're working out. Give me a break, dude. Yeah, it, I got you. you can't. You can't. Ah. But it, it takes me to, to to in the morning to 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 chug down my supplements and my smoothie. I timed it at about eighteen minutes. By the time I'm done, by the time I finish my smoothie. Mm -hmm. um, Swallowed all my pills. My 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 Halo support is done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. You know, and then I can get on to something else, answering emails, doing homework, right. writing. Right. Uh, but but you know I get I get most of that done in the morning. The evenings is more for V Light, uh, Newcom, um, anything else that that actually is going to put me into Alpha and then pop me into Delta and go to sleep. Okay, so this has been, like I said, already a phenomenal podcast. If somebody wants to reach out with you, work with you, connect with you, what's the easiest way for them to do that? Uh, go, go to my website, osgarcia.com. Beautiful. Oz, man, I'm eternally grateful for you coming on today. This has been phenomenal. A lot of people who are not probably familiar with you in my audience are going to become entirely familiar with you. And I, think you, I thought you gave some really high-level high value intel so again thank you so much and again all Dang you guys okay. yeah for sure go to oz's site it's osgarcia.com and ev and as i always say at the end of the jay campbell podcast now remember raise your vibration to optimize your love creation <laughs>